He's a terrifying enemy of G.I. Joe. Destro is his name. Destro is his name. G.I. Joe's an American hero. Fighting evil Destro. Introducing Destro. You better watch out, Joe. Hey, hey, welcome to Half the Battle. Well, we're going back to the comic this week, and we're continuing the Dr. Venom story arc. So, it's time for a recap. Last time in the G.I. Joe comic. Some of the Joes check out a possible lead on Cobra. Things go south fast though, both literally and figuratively, as they get captured by Dr. Venom in South America. They escape thanks to Snake Eyes, but he appears to be killed, alongside Quinn, an awesome mercenary Eskimo, and Dr. Venom himself, as Cobra blows up that tiny island they're on. The other Joes get rescued by the cavalry, but Snake Eyes is presumed killed in action. The last issue ended with taps coming from the bunker that was on the island and is now sunken into the river. And so the story continues in issue 14, Destro Attacks. Huh, I wonder what it's gonna be about. The cover has... Destro Attacking. Well, can't fault it there, Destro is leading an assault on the Joes. So far, so good. The actual issue picks up right after where the last issue left off. We finally get a look inside the sunken bunker and see who has been killed and who has survived. Everybody lives, Rose. Just this once! Everybody lives! Yep, all of them. All of them have survived. Quinn, Venom and Snake Eyes. Yeah, this is G.I. Joe, so of course nobody ever dies. Okay, that's a lie. In fact, lots of people died in the comics, but that's why the 100% survival rate here is puzzling me a bit. Also, why is Snake Eyes wearing his mask again? He went into the bunker without it. You could clearly see that at the end of the last issue, so what? Did he have a spare one that he pulled out of his boot or something? Anyway, we find our unlikely trio at odds. Dr. Venom isn't too happy that Snake Eyes is tapping for help. After all, it could be the Joes out there. He's even ready to hit him with a chair. Because Snake Eyes is calling for help. While they're stuck underwater. With the air running out. Dumbass. Quinn agrees with me and tries to reason with the mad scientist. Yeah, I think I called him a mad scientist before as a joke, but he's really living up to that name now. Especially since he actually does try attacking Snake Eyes with the chair, while Quinn has a gun trained on him. Hence Snake Eyes is a master ninja. I repeat, dumbass. Since Venom has tried to attack or kill Snake Eyes about 47 times by this point, the ninja has finally had enough, and it's time to choke a bitch. Only for Quinn to remind him that his speech of working together was also meant for him. Good old Quinn. At this point, Venom for some reason reveals he still got that deadly toxin he was supposed to give to Cobra. To intimidate them? I have no idea. After that happy scene, we switch to G.I. Joe headquarters where they've deciphered some information from the clue Cobra deliberately left behind. They believe they've hit that jackpot. And with that, we switch yet again, this time to Cobra headquarters, where Destro and the Baroness have their first one-on-one -on -one conversation. She's pissed that he insists she call him Destro, even though they know each other's real names. But he feels it's important for some reason, and she finally gives in. This is also the first time we get a full look at Destro, after he's been doing his best Dr. Claw impression for the last three issues. This would have been an important reveal, if not for the fact that they already fully showed him on the damn cover. A real smooth work there, guys. With that, guess what we're doing? We're switching back again. This time to Snake Eyes and Friends. And you know what? This happens so often in this story, that I'm just gonna recap all the Snake Eyes stuff at once. It doesn't really affect the main plot anyway. Venom is opening a valve to let the water in. He explains that their only hope is to equalize the pressure, 
So Quinn, the strongest of the three, can try to open the door. Quinn knows Venom is up to something, but he has no choice here. And sure enough, just as soon as Quinn gets the door open, he clunks the Eskimo on the head and leaves him to drown. Only Venom and Snake Eyes reach the surface. So, once again, somebody appears to be dead. Yeah, unlike Quinn, I wouldn't hold my breath to see if he's really dead, though. Uh, realizing this, Snake Eyes once again wants to reduce the good doctor's face to tomato paste, but gets stopped for the umpteenth time, as they're surrounded by angry men holding guns. These guys are actually the Cobra Troopers that were sent to safeguard the Joes so they'd pick up the fake clue. So what, these guys were just hanging around the riverbed for no particular reason? Instead of, no, I don't know, trying to return to base or something? Yeah, this is a bit too convenient to have them here. Anyway, Venom tries explaining that he's with Cobra, but they already know that the commander wanted him dead, and figure they'll get a nice bonus for killing him. Our mad scientist faces his faith with the grim bravery you'd expect. P please I, I have m money S Swiss accounts, please! What a guy. Well, the Cobra goons do spare them, but only so they don't have to carry the bodies all the way to the airfield, since they'll need proof of their demise. Venom proves he isn't playing with a full deck, as he goes from terrified groveling for his life, to smirking like an idiot in a split second. He's just realized that he's still got the catalyst for the deadly virus, so Cobra Commander only has part of what he needs. This part of the comic ends with everybody assuring each other that Quinn is most definitely dead. 100%. No doubt about it. No siree. And the comic ends with bubbles coming up from the water. So, yeah. So, that was Destro Attacks. A pretty good issue. Ahem. Oh, right. You may want to know what happens in the rest of the issue. You know, the part with Destro actually attacking? Coming right up! While an Eskimo, a ninja and a mad scientist walk into a bar, I mean, are stuck in a bunker, something else is going on. Complicated double and triple crossings were afoot. The Joes have deciphered the clue, and we now learn that it leads them to Springfield, Vermont. Which is actually where Cobra is, so what the hell? And by the way, we're back to switching back and forth, as we check in on the Baroness and the Commander, who explained that the fake clue was supposed to lead them to an insignificant US military post. And namely, the Chaplain's Assistant School in Fort Wadsworth. The funny thing is, this plan wouldn't have worked, since by coincidence, and I mean the sort of coincidence that you only get in comics or cartoons, it's actually G.I. Joe Headquarters. But, in any case, the clue was changed, but why? And by who? By Scarface! Say hello to my little friend! Okay, I think that joke has been completely played out by now. Yes, the Cobra Courier switched the clues under orders from Destro. Meanwhile, the Joes are preparing a covert strike team to go to Springfield. Uh, covert being a bit of a subjective term here, since they're picked up in the middle of the chaplain's baseball field. While there's a game going on. And we finally learn Destro's intentions. His plan was to have the Joes attack while Cobra Commander was in Springfield, so old Ragface would be captured or killed. That way, he could take over Cobra himself. He was assured that the commander would travel alone, and while that was true, he still needed a pilot to get there. And namely the Baroness. You know, the love of Destro's life. So now, Destro has to go rescue the Baroness, and in the process Cobra Commander, from the trap he himself set up. You see how all these schemes are just too complicated for their own good? I think I used that Avril Lavigne song way too soon. Anyway, in Springfield, at the Arpco Furniture Company, they are preparing for their leader's arrival. 
with the obligatory Nazi salute. Even though he's on the goddamn phone, so he can't see them. They land safely and are taken to a quarantine room to begin their work with a brand new deadly virus on a volunteer. And yes, this is an actual volunteer, not a prisoner or anything, since Cobra Commander's men really are supposed to be that fanatically loyal to him. Though I'm guessing Destro didn't really get that memo. The plan is to get the volunteer all virused up and then send him into G.I. Joe headquarters as a toxic time bomb. Since the strain is dormant for two weeks, this should go well. Things don't go well. You see, the guy promptly falls over dead. Yeah, turns out they need that catalyst from Venom. Oops. At this point, both Destro and the Joes have arrived near Springfield, and Stalker suspicions are immediately drawn to the furniture place. ARPCO is an anagram for COBRA! No, really? Okay guys, you're gonna have to hang on a bit, cause I gotta call Batman right away. Is something wrong? Batman, I have terrible news! Your title of world's greatest detective has been usurped by a G.I. Joe called Stalker! wishful thinking on his part. As both the Joes and Destro's forces approach, we get this exchange from some locals. Skydiving joggers with costumes? What will they think of next, Seth? Must be from New York. Everybody's crazy down there. And you know what? I think I just figured out how G.I. Joe and Cobra both managed to keep being secret organizations. Every civilian in their universe are complete morons! This is just like way back in issue 5, where some high school jocks didn't notice the huge guns the bad guys were carrying. It's the same thing here. You think these people would notice the heavily armed nature of these joggers. Seriously, think about it. I mean, if I were to go jogging like this, how long do you think it would be before I'm riddled with police bullets? Anyway, Destro finally does what was promised all issue, and he attacks. He manages to delay the Joe assault long enough so that Cobra Commander is warned and can make his escape at the last second. This is also the comic's introduction of Ace and his Sky Striker, by the way, as he's called in to blow up the factory, since the Joes mistake it for a missile silo, when it's really the launchpad for the Commander's supersonic jet. And so the main plot ends with nobody having accomplished anything. Destro gets away, but his plan to get rid of Cobra Commander has failed. And Cobra Commander doesn't get a victory either, since the virus doesn't work right. And the Joes finally are also left with nothing, since they blew up all the evidence. So this is pretty much a three-way draw. And that was Destro Attacks. My thoughts? Well, quite frankly, the issue is a must-read. There's a hell of a lot going on, and it's all interesting and intriguing. We get our first signs that not everybody within Cobra is as fanatically loyal to the Commander as it should be. And the schemes really heat up. We finally learned the fate of Snake Eyes and friends, and, well... Just this once! Everybody lives! Except Quinn, who apparently died this issue. Again and we'll never, ever see him again. The title, Destro Attacks, which I've been making fun of all video, is actually pretty clever, as you can interpret it in two ways. First, there's the obvious one, but it also signifies Destro putting his own plans in motion to take over Cobra. My only problems with the issue are minor, really. I didn't like that they ruined Destro's big reveal, by having him appear on the bloody cover. And there was a lot going on in just one issue. You had four plots going on, three of which converged at the end of the issue. Perhaps it would have been better to have all the sunken bunker stuff in a separate issue. Well, see you next week, everybody. He's a terrifying enemy of G.I. Joe. Destro is his name. Destro is his name. Destro. Introducing Destro. You better watch out, Joe. Hey, what's going on? Destro's stealing our tank. We gotta stop him. 
We didn't get you, Destro. You've met your match, Joe. Destro is here. G.I. Joe Battle Tank comes with figure, other figures, and Destro sold separately from Hasbro. What do you mean the bat phone is for emergencies only? You jolly devil.